All right, so this is Ross Weatherman from the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at Rose Holman Institute of Technology, and this is the post-lab um, data workup for the sugar density lab um, <clears throat> from the General Chemistry Lab Manual. So after you've done the lab, uh, you should have a set of numbers now, um, you know, a set of masses, okay? And so what we ultimately want to do is get the mass percent of our solutions develop a curve, a line, uh, that calibrates the, uh, relates density to volume, and then, or mass percent to density, and then finally we need to do then a, uh, our, uh, um, our unknown to figure out then what uh, our uh, tang concentration or whatever the drink that it may be that you're going to use, okay? So, um, so let's first um, start with um, just our measurements from when we made the solution. So this is just one example. So here we've got the mass of the beaker, uh, the mass of the beaker once we added some sugar, and the mass of the beaker when we added the sugar and the water. So I would prefer doing this rather than tearing the beaker because you need to know the mass of that beaker because there's a good chance that between these two you're going to step away from the balance and in that case, somebody else is going to tear your flask. So hopefully you've got these numbers. If not, you can sort of back calculate perhaps, but I think it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. So, so this makes it pretty easy, and you'll have five of these numbers, right, or, or multiple numbers, and I'm just going to do one. So the mass of the sugar, you just subtract the beaker. So in this case, it's 7.751 grams. The mass of the solution then is 102.450, uh, whoops, minus uh, 50.87. 817, so that's going to be 43.882. So if you want to do mass of percent, then you just need to take the mass of the sugar divided by the mass of the solution times 100%. Um, so 43.82. So your number then is 17.663%. Okay, so that gets us the mass percentage. Okay, so now if we then look at our masses, so let's say we took that solution that's 17% or whatever uh, sugar by mass, and then we measured out 10 mils in each case. Um, so our masses here are this. Um, we know our volume is 10.0. Um, I think it's probably pretty accurate. We might be able to even go with a, one more significant figure, 10.00. Uh, and so then that gives us a density, so we just divide the two of, you know, so if we took the average of these, and I'm not going to show you how to do that calculation because I figure you guys know how to do this, uh, the average density then is 1.06 grams per milliliter. Okay, so if you then did this for all of your different solutions, the four different or five different solutions, and then you graph it out, here uh, in chemistry we have certain standards. One, so you know, you use points and not uh, connect the dots. Then the fit is put on top of it. So this is the trend line that's added on top. I have error bars. That's not necessarily something you're going to need to have. This is something I added. Um, just for as you get more advanced, you'll start learning about these error bars. But you need to have a clearly labeled X appropriate title and units. This case, mass percent doesn't have a unit. Uh, density on the other side, although I spelled it wrong. Uh, density does have units. You need to have that. It needs to have a title. Um, hopefully it's not just, you know, density versus mass percent sugar or something like that. It's actually some sort of descriptive title. And then you have your fit equation, and most of the time we like that fit equation and the R-squared value to be on the graph. So at least for most of the general chemistry instructors, now your instructor may differ, but this is the exact format. So you can see here that um, when I did this experiment, I got uh, a relatively decent R-squared. Um, the error bar, or my errors are a little bit big, and so if this doesn't fit on a line, then you need to under try to figure out where you could have screwed up. Often it's a mistake in writing down numbers, or, and that's usually the most common, is especially when you're talking about the mass of the beaker. Uh, people tend to get a little bit confused sometimes, or they maybe just did the mass of the water, or it's just a mismeasurement. So anyway, so you'll get this fit equation, and so then if you have an unknown, um, you should be able to use that unknown then if your equation then is y equals 0.0033x plus 1.0024. 
and you get a density for your tang or whatever, and you know, I'm not going to tell you what that number would be, but you know, let's just say it was 1.06. Okay, so then you should be able to solve for x by plugging this density into y, solve for x, and that'll tell you then what the mass percent of sugar that would be in your sample uh, would be, and then you could figure out by the volume of your sample then how, if you knew the density of that, you know the density of it. So if you know, let's say, so we say this density is 1.06. Okay, so if you do this equation, then you'll find that x, if you plug this into here, you'd find that x equals 17.45%. Um, now, if you want to know, let's say, how many grams of sugar were in 100 mils of solution, okay, the mistake would automatically be, oh, it's 17.45. Well, that would be the case if the density were 1, but in this case we know the density is not 1. We know it's 1.06, so we need to take 1.06 grams per mil times 100 mils. That means that it's 106 grams. Now that times 17% then should uh, give you an answer of 18.497 grams. Okay, now I guess if you significant figures would probably two significant figures, so it's probably better to be uh, 18.50 grams. Okay, so, so this is the basic layout. If, again, if you have questions, please be sure to see your instructor about this. If this doesn't make any sense, um, uh, it should be a relatively straightforward calculation, however.